Hey everyone, it's your boy Gary Kings 405 welcome back to another video. It is that time again. Yes sir, it is mid-April, which means we have 10 days until the NFL Draft on April 25th. It is April 15th as of recording this. You all probably will see it tomorrow. But the hype around the draft is real, so we're doing a mock draft. I'm not putting it on Twitter this time. Probably going to be a longer video with more in-depth on my first round mock. And get this, on April 24th, I will do a live stream, hopefully, if I can actually do it, of all seven rounds, I'll be live streaming from pretty early to as late as I possibly can, and to all seven rounds, because I know a lot about this year's draft, I've gone to a lot of college football games, I went to the MTSU Alabama one earlier this season, I went to the Memphis UAB one earlier this season, I went to a ULM, I think Appy State game. I went to a FAU FIU when I was in Florida. I had a, Mich a t hockey tournament in Detroit, so I went to the Michigan Rutgers game. I've been to a lot of football games. I know a lot of players, There's, so I actually can get you a lot more in depth. The Chicago Star Bears. It's obviously going to be Caleb Williams. All right, I, he is the best quarterback prospect s since Trevor Lawrence. He's one of the best ones we've ever seen. Now, this class does remind me a lot of the Trevor Lawrence 2021 class. <clears throat> it's Caleb Williams, superstar quarterback that's been the inevitable number one pick for years. Relates to Trevor Lawrence. Drake May relates to Zach Wilson. Questionable competition. White boy, strong arm. Jaden Daniels was a reckless runner, kind of like Justin Fields. There was uh, Michael Penix, who I don't know who he related to. Ooh, uh, hold up. I forget a lot of... Th There's McCarthy who relates to uh, Mac Jones. Oh, yeah, then there's Jaden Daniels, which relates to Trey Lance in terms of play style. But anyway, that's besides the point. Chicago Bears want to take Caleb Williams. They added a lot of pieces this, se this offseason. Everyone's thinking, oh, they're going to stick with... They're going to stick with Justin Fields. They're going to draft MJ or MHJ, whatever. Or, then they trade just, Justin Fields and they trade for Mike Allen. So, oh, it's obvious they're drafting Caleb Williams. He doesn't take a genius to figure that one out. Now, as for Washington, they, need a, they have a lot more team needs. But, obviously they're going to take a quarterback as well. They're going to take one of these better ones. But, everyone's thinking they're going to take one of these two, obviously. I'm pretty sure they are. But, you just don't know which ones. Because, it's it's a bit weird with how their team is set up. I mean, let's go. Which means they need a much sturdier quarterback like Drake May. I honestly think they're going to pass on the Jaden Daniels and take Drake May. Because their offensive line is not the best. Is, but I think they're fine to hold off on taking, like, a second overall offensive tackle. They're going to take a sturdy Drake May who can move around. They're not going to take Jaden Daniels because as soon as he gets landed on too many times, especially on his, his elbow. Hold on. Let's look at I mean, look at his elbow. If you, if you land too hard on that elbow, he's not throwing another ball ever. So they're going to take a Drake May. But yeah, I'm confident on that one. The Patriots, everyone's thinking that Washington's going to take Jaden 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 Daniels and Patriots going to take Drake May because they want a Caucasian quarterback. They don't have Bill Belichick anymore. They have Gerard Mayo, and they've done all right this offseason. I wouldn't say it's relatively good, but they need a playmaker, and Jaden Daniels is that playmaker that they're going to draft. Now, there is speculation they might draft J.J. McCarthy, and if they do, they are stupid, and that is one of my biggest takes on this draft of uh, those three quarterbacks. Now, that, okay, <clears throat> I don't need to explain this one. The Arizona Cardinals, they, I don't know who their best receiver is. I, it was Rondell Moore, then they got traded to Atlanta. Marvin Harrison Jr. will obviously be who they take. So, boom, they're going to take more M MHJ. Now, 
for the LA Chargers. This one's a weird one. They have a lot of needs, but they need a pass catcher. They don't really have a wide receiver. Now I think Jim Harbaugh is gonna go into the second round. Where's running back? Second round, take Blake Corum, but he's not gonna take him off rip. I think he's gonna be looking at a Malik Neighbors run with Dunsey. But honestly, I think that they're going to take Brock Bowers. But I don't think this is the right pick because they don't have a wide, a wide receiver for or Justin Herbert to run out of the pocket and launch 70 yards down the field to. Brock Bowers is that Travis Kelsey. Is that Travis Kelsey to Mahomes? I think he'll be a great fit for that offense. And I think Brock Bowers will be the fifth overall pick, being the second highest drafted tight end, only behind Kyle Pitts. As for the Giants, I honestly think they're going to take the chance to get off of Daniel Jones, but not in the first round. What they're going to do is they're going to get Daniel Jones a weapon like Malik Neighbors. Really good receiver who has had, I don't know his numbers, but I know he's had really good numbers. He's been the consistent second best wide receiver in this draft class for a while. Oh, they're going to take him a leak neighbors, give Daniel Jones more help than he are, than he needs because they have Jalen Hyatt. Darren Waller's considering retirement, but if he comes back, that, that they have him. They have a Average offensive line, but Daniel Jones can move. But they need they need that wide receiver one, and Malik Neighbors is that guy. So they're going to take Malik Neighbors. As for the Titans, we have needs, but I think we're I think everyone knows this one. We're going to take Joe Walt. We need an offensive lineman. We haven't had that left tackle since Taylor Luan retired. We drafted Skaronski at nine or something last year. Whenever we drafted him, I think. 11, maybe. But we drafted him to be a guard because we knew he wasn't going to be an offensive tackle in the NFL. He was maybe a good, a, amazing one in the Big Ten, not one in the NFL. He's an amazing pulling guard. So we're going to take Joe Alt and secure the left side of that offensive line and, and secure most of our offensive line. So we have Lloyd Cushenberry as well. So we're going to take Joe Alt, secure that left side of the O line to help out our, our young quarterback. Now for the Atlanta Falcons. This one's weird. They've gone all out on offense this year. And I feel like this is... I feel like they're going to get their defense on lockdown. So it's either one of these four right here. Now, honestly, I think they'll be taking the superstar all-mac corner, Quentin Mitchell, which you might be like, he plays in the Mac. Why is he going to be top 10 or top 8, whatever? Because he locked up Marvin Harrison Jr. at Ohio State. That he has proved himself against the best competition. Quentin, Quinion, Mitchell, Quinion Mitchell goes to the Falcons at 8. And number 9, the Bears are up again. And I think that they're going to say this again. They might have added, they might have DJ Moore and Keenan Allen and Cole Komet and whatnot, but they still have, they still need, because Keenan Allen, he's old, he's slow, he's going to be that slot. You got DJ Moore be that one. They don't have a wide receiver too. I think that's where Roma Dunsey steps in and they draft Roma Dunsey. Ever since he got a above average quarterback in Michael Penis, he has gone off. With I think these last two years, he's had around twenty seven hundred receiving yards and twenty seven touchdowns. Two years. That's pretty good for the twenty five, twenty six games he's played. So we're gonna take Roma Dunsey. Is that if I ran for this one? Fifteen minutes, okay. Now, number 10, the Jets, who actually today unveiled some new logos and jerseys. People have mixed opinions on them. I think their helmet is fire. Their jerseys, they go back, they're basic, but they are clean. I'm going to say they're pretty clean. 
I like I like their new jerseys. But that's besides the point. The point is they need to draft someone. They they just got Mike Williams, who will get hurt most definitely, but they already have Garrett Wilson. I think they're fine on offense at wide receiver and stuff. I think what they're gonna do is take Jijan Newton. Jean I, I don't know how to say the name. Yeah. Amazing D lineman out of Illinois, at ten, he is the full package. He is a he is a big boy, so he can play interior D line, but he's also incredibly agile, which means he can play on the edge. He's the full package at defensive line. He's also insanely strong as well. But the Vikings, and I'm not doing any trades for this one, so this is how the Viking this is how it would be. On the live stream, I probably will do. I will try to do my best to predict trades. But I'm not gonna sit here and act like I know what I'm talking about. Trades. The Vikings, they're gonna draft a quarterback, and they're gonna draft a quarterback to sit behind. They're gonna draft a quarterback to sit behind Sam Darnold for a year, and I think the guy they're gonna take is a guy like J.J. McCarthy, who can throw dimes. Um, but they just need someone to get just a Jefferson the ball, and they will make the playoffs most of the time. So they're going to draft J.J. McCarthy out of Michigan, the Big Ten guy. The guy got carried to a national championship, just like Mac Jones did back in 2020. I hope he does well. I personally watched watched him play against Rutgers. Rutgers played pretty well against him, but I think McCarthy is just better. Now, as for Denver, who they wanted J.J. McCarthy, so this is a real blind side to them, but they are also showing interest in Bo Nix. And that's exactly who they're going to draft. They traded Russ, and they have a question mark at quarterback right now. And I think the perfect player for, to fit that for Sean Payton's step offense is Bo Nix. But honestly, I feel like they should draft Penix, but knowing Sean Payton, he's going to throw a curveball in there. All right, he's going to develop Bo Nix to hopefully a halfway decent quarterback. Uh, and they're going to take Bo Nix. Uh, I'm going to go a bit faster later on now because big names off the board. But the Las Vegas Raiders. I think we're going to have another three-peat with quarterbacks. The Raiders... I don't know on this one, dude. Cause they have Aiden O'Connell, who did all right for a rookie, but at the same time, I, I also don't see—I don't see them taking an offense, taking a quarterback, unless they trade down for more picks. But I think that they'll be taking here with no trades. Cooper DeJean out of Iowa, who's going to be one of the only, if not the only, white cornerback in the NFL. Nothing against my white boys, because I know we have a lot on my team that play DB. Personally, I'm not a corner. I'm a linebacker. Cooper DeGene. New Orleans Saints on the clock. The Saints, they're in a weird position. Because, honestly, I feel like they're whatever they do, they're going to be third in the division behind Tampa Bay. In Atlanta. Now, they can do better in the fact that they can't be fourth because Carolina's done something in free agency. So I think what they're going to do is try to play the slow game with Alvin Kamara uh, and run the ball. Uh, so I think they're going to be taking Byron Murphy out of Texas and just play and just play the low-scoring defensive game. Byron Murphy is one of the better D interior D lineman spots we have this season. As for the Colts, they don't really need much. But I do know they have been interested in Dallas Turner or and Jared Verse, even though they don't need edge rushers. Now I think, even though there's Terry on Arnold, they like Nate Wiggins a lot. So I think they're gonna draft Nate Wiggins. Who I haven't watched much ACC ball or Clemson ball for that matter, but based on some film I've seen on him, granted most of this is video game film, so don't take my word for it, he's looked solid and he's looked that Colts type cornerback to pair with Kenny Moore, 
Or, and the Colts are obviously going to be more a defensive team, but they're also starting to show their offensive signs this season. Now, as for the Seahawks, I think this is where we see our sixth quarterback off the board in the first round, Michael Penix Jr., going to Seattle. I mean, he went to college at Washington. They're going to keep him there, develop him behind Geno oh, for a year, maybe two, and then let Michael Penix just run wild like he did in the Pac-12, like he did in the Big Ten when he was with Indiana. He that season, no, they only played like 10 games or something. They did really well. Now, I haven't personally seen a play, but I've watched a lot of Pac-12 ball. I watched your championship game where he just outperformed Bo Nix. But granted, he did have a better team around him. I honestly think Bo Nix deserves a spot over. As well as, it looks like Bo Nix has a stronger arm. To me, that might just be a righty looking at lefty universe. But with the Sean Payton style offense, they're going to take more, uh, more sturdy quarterback to just throw darts from the pocket. Now, my, and Michael Panix is more of that move around, uh, make plays, make make nothing to something. As for the Jaguars, they've been quiet this free agency. They signed Gabe Davis for no reason. Honestly, I don't agree with that move. But nonetheless, they've been quiet, and, uh, and honestly. We've had Leatu Latu fall oh, this far. I think they're going to be taking their chance with the edge rusher. Or they're going to take the LA boy. Even though he's not, I don't think he's from LA. But they're going to be taking the Lo Los Angeles edge rusher. Or, and throw him in Jacksonville. Hope that works. I think they I think they really want to try and bring back the Saxonville defense or what, or what was. And honestly, don't be surprised if you see the Jaguars trade up in these 20s and maybe try to acqu acquire one of the better corners like Terry and Arnold if he falls this far or Cooley McKinstry. But for 17, they will draft Leatu Latu without, with obviously, because I'm not doing trades in this video because I'm not going to sit here and act like I know what trades are going to be made when last year... Uh, I kind of predicted that A.J. Brown will stay with the Titans, and that didn't happen. I'm just a trail on Burks. Wait, was that last year? No, it was two years ago. What? What? Oh, hold the phone. Yeah, last year I drafted Skronsky. Offensive line, obviously. Any offensive line help. Well, you might honestly see them trade up. Because if, if J.J. McCarthy goes before before the Broncos have a chance to get him, I think you might see the Bengals trade up to 12 and draft an offensive lineman. Even though I really think that the only lineman, I think they'll easily be able to have one of these better ones fall to them. Because there's still, there's still four, four of the top five, and we're already at pick 18. And honestly, I feel like they'd take Troy... Troy. I feel if they take Troy here out of Washington, not going to try on his last name. Again, I'll watch a lot of Pac-12 ball because it was the last year of Pac-12 I got to enjoy for it's the Pac-2. But anyway, I know he has solid arm length. I know he has a good first step, and, he and he's disciplined as well, based on what I know. Oh, and he was locking up some of the better edge rushers out of the Pac-12. Granted, there weren't many because... If we go to the best edge rushers out of the Pac-12, yeah, you have the Utah, and you have his own teammate, Gabriel Murphy, and there's obviously a lot to lot to. Ooh, yeah, but anyway, now we're at the Rams. Now we're into the playoff teams, and the Rams. Now they need a quarterback. Now, for the live stream, you'll see me have them with the quarterback, maybe second round, third round. But they're going to try and keep what's the tiny amount of their Super Bowl window that's alive by, obviously, defense wins championships. They're going to take a Tyrion Arnold out of Alabama here. They're going to try. 
and see if they could play good enough defense to carry them to the playoffs and hope that it's good enough. Granted, that's what the Titans have used and got outpaced by higher-powered offenses, but maybe Sean McVay can do it better than Mike Vrabel. Probably not. But anyway, now the Steelers. I don't know why quarterback is in need on here. They have Justin Fields and Russell Wilson. That's why quarterbacks are in need. They suck. Okay, whatever. Besides the point, they want... They want to... Now, Russ is a mobile quarterback. So, I feel like they're going to want a wide receiver. But if you scroll down... This wide receiver is Brian Thomas. And nothing against him. He's probably going to be more athletic than I... He's probably going to be more athletic when he's 50 year olds than I ever will be in my life. But I was just never that impressed by him. Now they're now these yeah yeah Lad McConkey 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 yeah I I've been impressed by some of these guys Troy Franklin he impressed me a lot but I honestly don't see them re I honestly see them now I'm not gonna do it I honestly see them trading down if they get a good enough offer <laughs> because I mean look at what's on the board you have Dallas Turner still up and I could very much see. The a Tampa Bay trying to swoop in on that. Now, since I can't do that, I think I think they're going to try a, and see if they would. They're either going to trade down, um, because edge rushers like Dallas Turner are still on the board, or they're going to trade down to draft Jackson Powers Johnson. But I'm just going to have them straight up draft Jackson Powers Johnson. He's easily the best center in this class. He snaps the ball well. He's explosive. He's good at run blocking. He's solid in pass blocking. Uh, again, I watched a lot of Oregon Washington ball this year. So Now, Miami. Who you might see trade up at an attempt to nab up Brock Bowers. Which, if he goes at five. Granted, I think if you want to try and trade up with either Atlanta or Chicago here to get him if he doesn't go in these top seven picks. But Miami is an interesting. It's an interesting one. Because they have a solid offensive line, but it could get better. So they're going to take what they can with the 12th best player, according to this website, Pro Football Focus, it's in NFL.com. Um, they're going to take... Him, Oregon State tackle. Not gonna try on his name and butcher it. Now one is for Philly. It's interesting with them, but I think they're going to try their best to save their secondary because it was hot garbage that later end of the season, and they're gonna take Kool Aid McKinstry out of Alabama. Why are people texting me, Brent? All right, now, for Minnesota, this is one of them. I had them taking J.J. McCarthy. That solves their quarterback need. Now, there is still a lot of needs on this team. So, I think they're going to be taking... You know, I watch Penn State, but I like Penn State. My dad's from Pennsylvania. I have a Penn State hoodie in my closet all the way downstairs. But anyway, we're going to be taking Penn State tackle. Penn State tackle. Oh, and they're going to try and hope their offense can get it done. They don't have a defense worth it this season. As for the Cowboys, they haven't done jack squat in free agency. The only thing they did was re-sign their long snapper. And again, I can't talk shit about that because I am a long snapper and a linebacker in real life. But they haven't done anything. <laughs> And they've just been letting their team rot. I know they, they have a good team. But, I mean, come on. You're supposed to be America's team. America don't doesn't just sit around when, they don't, when they're... Okay, we do kind of sit around, but okay. I think they're going to try... I don't know what we're going to try to do here. Because... I don't see them taking a Peyton Wilson at NC State. He did impress me with the little amount of film that I've seen off of him. 
But knowing Dallas, they're going to do something stupid. And by something stupid, I mean like a Zach Frazier. And that's honestly what I see them doing, taking Zach Frazier out of West Virginia. Because it's a Cowboys thing to do. Because they're, they're, I mean, look at their division. They've been doing the same thing for like 20, 25 years. There's own the Giants, own the Commanders, and split the division with the Eagles. They've done that for 25 years. And no one talks about it. It's like, Giants aren't going to do anything against them. Commanders won't, unless the Commanders just have that huge leap with their quarterback. And they're just going to split with the Eagles, winning at home and losing on the road to them. So they're going to go five and one, maybe six and two, maybe four, maybe six and zero, oh, maybe four and two. So they're going to be fine. So they have room to do stupid shit in the draft. Now Green Bay will we'll probably take the Minnesota Gopher, which I remember watching them play against Central Michigan. Where's in Nebraska? I think it was Nebraska actually. Sorry, allergies. But I was extremely impressed on how much this the leader of the Minnesota defense, Tyler Nubbin, really did for them. And I feel like he'd be a perfect fit to pair up with Xavier McKinney and Jair Alexander. They're going to have one hell of a secondary with this pick. Now, I've had Dallas Turner fall. He's going to be a top 10 pick most likely. I just... Let me get my point real quick. Dallas Turner didn't record a single sack against MTSU. Granted, he didn't play as much because it was MTSU, but still, you'd expect him to at least get a sack. I'm not that impressed with him, but I do see Tampa Bay taking him. Honestly, I think their offense is just fine with how it is. Signing, re-signing Big Mike and keeping Baker. And they need defensive help. Dallas Turner is the guy to fill that hole. Now, Arizona. They've already drafted Marvin Harrison. So they've sealed that one. But at the same time... I really don't trust this team to make the right move. Especially because Kyler... Is not that good of a quarterback, and neither is Desmond Ritter. So they need a lot more protection. I feel like J.C. Latham would be a really good pick for them. But I honestly think Tyler Guyton's a lot better. But they're going to take J.C. Latham because he's out a lot more experience and a lot more film on him. Um, and also just a lot more NFL ready. That was for the Bills. They need a wide receiver. They're going to take Brian Thomas Jr., or after they traded Stephon Diggs. I still hate that they did that to the Texans. LeBron Thomas Jr., he's impressed me. But at the same time, outside of Roma Dunsey, Malik Neighbors, Marvin Harrison, and, I mean, the receivers impressed me, but not as much as people are saying they should. But I do see Tom, Brian Thomas Jr. being a great fit for that offense. Now, Detroit. It's an interesting one. Because they made the LFC Championship. Granted, they lost. They should have gone to the Super Bowl if, you know, freaking Dan Campbell decided to put down how big his balls were and just kick a field goal. But I feel like they're going to take Jared Verse out of Florida State. They need an edge rusher. Dan Campbell knows that. He's, I don't think he wants to trade up. But anyway, now we're the last three picks. How long have I been recording? 38 minutes. Holy fuck. Anyway, Baltimore. They don't need anything. They have Derrick Henry and Lamar Jackson. They're gonna take. They're gonna take Tyler Guyton. Just 
to play with us. The, the fact that they that you're not going to be able to defend the read option. I don't have to explain myself. It'll be fine. Sam Fran. One of the most complete teams in going to the NFL this season. I feel like they'll be taking... Oh, these corners. I feel like if we take in, uh, flip a coin, I'll flip a, I'll, I'll flip a USB thing for my main mouse, because it's dead, so I'm using my backup mouse, but basically, this side is heads, this side is tails, so, remember, heads, tails. We're going to flip it. Not a great flip, it landed in my trash can. Hold up. We're going to re flip. I'm not that good of a flipper. And it landed on tails. Which means that they're going to be taking Big Mike out of Michigan. Of U of M. Now, as for the Kansas City Chiefs. Forget. Yep. Yeah, who is it that ran a four two one forty? <clears throat> he ran a four two one forty, and the and with Patrick Mahomes having that huge arm, they're just gonna say, "All right, you go down field." They're gonna say, "Xavier, Xavier Worthy, right? Yeah, Xavier, go down field. Whoever the f or other wide receiver is." Run like a a slam. Travis, do your thing. Mahomes will get you all the ball. That, that's that's going to be their plan. So this is my special mock job. I'm going to go ahead and copy that image. But there's some, not very many surprises, like these first four, maybe these first six, seven. But I've had a couple surprises, like... You know, Nate Wiggins going at 15 when he really shouldn't. Zach Frazier going at 24. Or uh, that guy from Oregon State falling to Miami. Dallas Turner falling to 26. But I honestly see this happening. So, yeah. So, uh, if you made it to the end of this video, which, looking at my analytics, you probably don't, because if we go to, you guys usually, like, let's look at my most, let's look at my most popular video that's not five minutes long. Um, play and rank till we rage quit. We look at the analytics on this one. I mean, you guys impressed me with this. Average view duration, 2 minutes and 19 seconds. I am... And look, 44% of viewers are watching at the 30 second mark. Over half of the viewers click off before I'm done with my intro. That's so if we look at my analytics, look at the research no, audience. YouTube tells me at 98.2% of my viewers are not subscribed. Fuck. So if, you, if you've made it this far in the video, do me a big favor, hit that subscribe button. It's completely free and you can always unsubscribe later. Alright. I don't have a great record recording schedule, but I try my best. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.